caution is advised. Hey everyone, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering you a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial membership. All you need to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash bgunlocked. The link is in the description below, and now enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Bradner doing our top 10 games of 2019. Uh, this year, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and completely steal what um, Z Garcia said for their top 10, and he said this year felt like it was it was a year of more complete, well-rounded games than just kind of games that uh, that were more. Like, oh, here, here's some real bangers, but then others that are like, well, I mean, it's just kind of like, has this idea, you know? Like, the games that, the games that I have on this list are, they're, they're, it's just insane. I say it every year, that the years just get better and better, and I said that last year, and I was like, oh, it can't really get, it, it really did. At least in my opinion. Yeah. So, it was, now mind you, going into this list... I thought I'd played a nice chunk of 2019 games, and then there's there, I missed out on some. I've, I mm -hmm. realized after looking through that probably would be on this list if I had played them. Um, I would say it's about an average year, not 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 in a bad way. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like if I'm looking at all like all time, yeah, I would say it's kind of average, maybe above average, a little bit. It's not the best. Yeah. But it's it's definitely solid, and like I said, that could be changed if I played some of those other games too. Right. There's some. I mean, here's the thing: is like the games that I play, but I actively seek out 2019 games, even right. if the game, they're games that I wouldn't have necessarily bought, like seeing them on the shelf. It's like, oh well, that might make the list, and there are still some that I just couldn't get to. And we'll talk about those after we do the list. But uh, as always, we have an honorable mention. Um, I'll go ahead and get started. Mm -hmm. Uh, funny enough, this list actually, like, it was kind of all over the place. My top two were were solid, but then, like, basically up, they just kind of kept moving around depending on the day. But my honorable mention is a game, is a small little game that kind of, that this, this is the only non-Kickstarter game. No, that's not true. Everything else except number 11 and 10 are, uh, wow. <laughs> are Kickstarter games. One, I don't so. know if that was Kickstarter. So... Like so, this one kind of came half came half. out of nowhere, and I feel like it kind of took took the, like people by storm. Like they were like they like really liking it, how little it was. But uh, Tiny Towns, did you play Tiny Towns? So Tiny it's, Towns it's is actually on my list of ones that of I ones that you, ha that that I, you haven't played. <laughs> right, that's funny. Yeah, so it Tiny Towns is like a really really neat, uh, almost like Tetris style kind of game where you are trying to build a. a a town in like a three by three grid. Maybe it's not three by three. That seems a little bit small. But uh, the 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 gimmick is that everyone has to share resources. So on your turn, you like announce, "Oh, I'm gonna get wood," and then so everyone has to place wood somewhere, and you're all trying to build the fucking a Zelda. <coughs> the fucking door. So <laughs> if I cut that part out, <laughs> um. Where was I? Oh yeah, so yeah. you announce wood, and then like everyone has to place wood, and then you're slowly trying to build these buildings that are randomly set up in the middle, and they all have different ways that you're going to score victory points. Like, and over time, as you like, you know, do the correct sequence of cubes, and you you know wipe those, and you place one of the buildings there, and over time, your your board gets smaller and smaller. Like it it has almost like that same level and and uh, puzzling nature as like photosynthesis. Um, but with what, like, much more variety. Mm -hmm. And they already announced an expansion, which I'm excited for. And, I mean, it easily could have been the list, but, I mean, like I said, this year for me, right. just kept pushing things, you know, further and further back. I know if I would have played it, it probably would have been, because it sound, it's something I've had my eye on. Mm -hmm. My wife, I know, would enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but I, we just never never did get around to right. it. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. that's my honorable mention, Tiny Town. My honorable mention is the DC deck building game Rebirth. Did that come out this year? Yep. Oh. Yep. Um, and <clears throat> it's it's a standalone expansion, I guess. Standalone game. Mm -hmm. These expansions. That's why when I encountered it. Um, but what it does is, if you've played the uh, 
<laughs> if you've played the DC deck building game, you know it's a competitive deck builder. Um, kind of has some weird theme issues with it and stuff. But um, what this does is it turns it to a a legacy style cooperative game, deck building game, mm -hmm. where you you can put cards from your other sets into it as well. There's little envelopes and you are running through a story hmm. and you're deck building. You can play solo, which is the main reason I got it. Yeah. You know, it's running solo and you can, uh, <clears throat> you just go through, you play the scenarios, you're deck building, you, you, there, it brings in movement. So you like, you have a little, your little person and you're moving to different parts of the oh, okay. town and doing different stuff. Oh, that's, that's pretty you neat. Know, it, so it changes the game into, it, it definitely breathe more life into that mm -hmm. game because I like the game in general but the theme theming kind of sucked when yeah. you put enemies into your deck and, and I think I ask you every time like we bring this up <laughs> but do you like DC or Marvel better? Oh Marvel Mar okay I mean I like Superman but sure but, yeah. you know, it's, it's all Marvel right yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like characters are just way right. better in Marvel but but yeah so the, you know that's why it's my honorable mention just because like you said same reason it's the other uh, it was a good year, mm -hmm. decent. All my other stuff is just knocked it back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, my number ten is a game that I happened to play like about a about a week ago, and I was so surprised by it because it was on my shelf for quite some time, and I was like, it just never had that appeal to be like, oh, let's, you know, let's get this to the table. Um, well, I was like, you know what? It's twenty nineteen. Let's just let's just see. And I was like very much blown away. And that is Hadara. So Hadara is what everyone was saying was like the Seven Wonders Killer. And uh, why I don't quite agree with that, I can see why some people would say that. This game is a very slick, you know, straightforward, not not really card, I guess it is card drafting, but like, like not in the same way where you have a hand of cards and you pass it, it's all the cards are in the table and then you, you pick one mm -hmm. and then, you know, it goes around like that. But this is a really good civil, like card civilization game um, that that does a lot of like it kind of turns things on its head. You have your four meters, and each card that you that you grab is going to increase your one of the one of those tracks. And then the neat thing about this game is like the first there's two phases. The first phase is you you have like your board has a little icon on it, and that's like your thing. And then there's a little wheel that mm -hmm. so that the first player sets it, and then wherever your icon is pointing, that's the deck that you draw two cards from. And everyone does it simultaneously. Like, the game is just super, right. super quick. And you you take one, you can either take that card and pay for it, or you can, uh, you can sell it and gain a certain amount of money. And then you have to discard a card, because in the second phase, then everyone in turn order drafts from the, the discard pile. So every, every card that is in chosen for the game for that era, there's three eras, will get used or sold in some way. Um, man, I was I was so blown away by this game. Like, it was, like, turn efficiency. There was never, like, a time, like, where it's like, oh, God, okay, so if he wants this, like, that, that's kind of eliminated, and you're just, like, super quickly building your civilization. Multiple ways to get victory points. They have kind of like the purple, like, there's purple cards, kind of like in um, Seven Wonders, how they have special abilities. Same yeah. thing here. Uh, like the only the only negative for me is that like I just want more content right like for it so I'm hoping it did well for Z Man yeah Z Man I was gonna ask what company it was yeah I so I'm hoping like I mean hell even just one expansion like I think would be fine but yeah Hadara snuck up on the list it's that's one I've been wanting to play a bunch it's uh, it's on my list of unplayed as well <laughs> so but I know that this one would be one that <clears throat> would get played a ton because it's, Amy my my wife's favorite game is is Seven, Seven wonders. wonders, yeah, and this would bring in another. Here's the thing, variation. though, is like, if what I was telling people was, if someone's like, "Oh, should I play Hadara or Seven Wonders?" Like, I'd probably say Hadara, like at first, because it is so much more simpler, but still has that same level of like. It does have a bunch of icons. No. So it's a low icon. Yeah, no. That, that would be a good one then. Yeah, for like because sure, that's the only drawback to Seven Wonders is that, the icon. That's true. Stuff I mean, learned. Uh. I mean, there are, I guess, some type of icons, but they're very right. clearly obvious what, what it is. But I don't know what they did because I was worried, like, oh, wow, it's 7-1. Like, like I, was, I thought it was going to be the exact same, but they changed the way the game played. And I was I was pleasantly surprised. So that's my number 10, Hadara. 
All right. My number 10 is... Oh, sorry, real quick. How many crossover do you think we'll have? I think we will have zero. I really don't think that you've... No, nope, we'll have one. I lied. Sorry, we will have one. Um... Like, yeah. yeah I think yeah. one. I think one. Okay. Yeah, and it's probably the same one we're thinking. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> so, uh, and for the record, every every uh, game that I talk about, I have done a run through for run through or a no run through review for. So, all right. I try to do that. I try to get my like the best games at least get like a discussion or something on. So perfect. So yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, my number ten is a game that I picked up. We were gonna play one time and we didn't. Uh, when I after I brought it, and it's Resident Evil Two, the board game. Did you get it played? I've played the the core box, which mm. oh, okay. is all this is going on, which it should because the expansions and stuff are kind of sure. They're, um, I'm a big fan of Resident Evil, so that's why I went for this mm -hmm. game. Did you see the Resident Evil Three remake trailer? No, I haven't. Yeah, they're doing a remake for it too, oh, like they did Resident Evil Two. See, Resident Evil Four is the one that was probably one of my favorites. So mm -hmm. I'm like, if they can, if they can do a updated version. They probably will. Awesome. They might do a remake for it. But, but anyway, um, so pretty much what this is, is it, it it's a scenario based game and, it, and it's um, if you run it through the way people have figured out um, the scenario order to actually play like you're playing the entire Resident Evil 2 video game. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then you have all the expansions that adds different malformations and all mm. this different junk, but it's not needed for for the core game, but pretty yeah. much you're going through and y there's noise. You think zombie side? Remember how in yeah. zombie side there was the noise mm -hmm. deal? This one there's noise, and that's how they know to come to wherever and everything. Mm -hmm. um, ammunition's limited, just like in the video game. Yeah. Do you have um, to like track like your inventory? Like there is you. You actually have a board in front of you. Okay. That has like slot, slot. You have, like to, a, you have okay. to place stuff down. So yeah, it, it's the exact God, same. That's, that shit's so. Oh, I know, I know, and and uh, it, it's. I mean, it's it, it it is Resident Evil Two on the board game. It's fiddly a yeah. little bit. Um, it's it could have been more streamlined. I think. I think Steam Forged Games is who made it, which they've done. They did Dark Souls. Dark Souls. It and is stuff. Dark Souls. I also played Dark, Dark Souls, so I don't know. How it compares to that as far as... Yeah, I, I didn't play Resident Evil 2, so... <clears throat> but, um... But anyway, so... Uh, it's a solid game, you know, it's a... Uh, kind of like a... Dungeon... Dungeon game crawl. crawl. I mean, you have the tiles, you move mm -hmm. around, you know, you're trying to do your different stuff. Is it um, is it like a re-themed zombie side? No, I okay. mean it's it's. I when I say the noise, the noise is the only thing. Sure, similar. yeah. I mean that was just that was a different question because um, I wasn't sure. Because looking at it, like I only wanted to play it because I had just finished playing the remake, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh sweet, because um, I'd never played Resident Evil Two prior to that. Right. And then I was like, well, I never wanted to pay for it because I wasn't sure if it was going to be like. A zombie side with just Resident Evil skin right, over it, right. and I'm not the huge, I'm not the biggest zombie side fan. Right. But it's good to know that it is different than in that the scenario different. base, like, like the the game. And it's a good game, and I, and I've been, I I will get into the expansions at some point that'll add more beasts and just the alligator, stuff. yeah, the giant alligator, yeah, and stuff like that. But but uh, but it's a solid game, you know, and it's it's if you like I said, it's it if you were not a Resident Evil fan. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it would be as good. Oh, of a, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, there's other games that are better. Yeah. But then when you, if you're a Resident Evil fan, you know, we've talked about the deck building game. Yep. You know, that yeah. I've been trying to find again. <laughs> I've been trying to find it again. <laughs> hey, <laughs> comment below if you have it. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, just anything Resident Evil I'm, I'm into. So. Gotcha. Yep. Good deal. My number nine is a game that initially I think I pushed off the list just, but then whenever the games that I played, I redid the list and it, and it got back on there again because I was really like, I was I was really surprised at how good this game was, and that is Court of the Dead. So Court of the Dead was a Kickstarter that was done right, and what I mean by that is like the way the component quality for this game is through the roof and. It wasn't like add-ons to get <clears throat> like a better edition. It was just stretch goals to make the game better. And I'm like, yes, like that is what you do. So in Court of the Dead, 
you are basically like like a, a courtesan sort sort of a, like a, like a mediator between to like to like work with death, mm -hmm. and he's like wanting to to strike against like heaven and stuff like that. So you're trying to you know amass an army and all that. It's a really weird theme. But you play as one of one of the three factions, bones, flesh, or spirit, and all have their own unique cards and and strategies to mm -hmm. win. But it's essentially an area control game. So you are uh, trying to basically uh, get these special cards that give you more units to be able to place in certain areas to be able to amass like uh, what's called unity, which is like their, um, which is like the coins, and. Whoever has, like, because the pool, there's a pool of coins. Once that's gone, that ends the game. Gotcha. Um, and there's just multiple ways of different strategies. You're you're vying for control over the... There's there's two different, like, parties within each faction. Mm -hmm. And all give you a special ability if you have the most of that faction. And how you get the most of that faction is you draft, like, special cards from, mm -hmm. like, the three different schools. And then you're like, okay, well, now I have the most of this one, so this can give me this ability. Right, right. Um, and, like, I've played as a two-player game, i play as a three-player game, i play as a four-player game, and it is, like, solid at every player said, count. The art looks really cool. The art That's is... I was looking it up, because I, I hadn't, hadn't seen, heard of it before. Right, the art is absolutely amazing, and it kind of, it has almost a... a semi-cooperative nature, not for the gameplay at all, but really mm -hmm. there's one section where everyone at the beginning, you grab a certain number of these gems and you divvy them out, the first player divvies them out um, in a certain like amount based on number of players, and then you, you pick them and these you use these to spend for abilities and things like that. But you can also choose to put them in a certain area because the number of gems you need needs to match like the awareness of like the angels. And that's where everyone can be like, okay, let's all do this, because whoever right. doesn't do it will lose the Unity coins. I think it's called Unity. It's like, whenever it was off the list, I was actually surprised. I was almost kind of disappointed. I was like, no, I, that game is so good. And then I'm glad it, it still ended up making the list, because I, I was just pleasantly surprised. And Who is the company? That... I couldn't tell you. Like they, I don't oh, think they've ever made anything Project before. Project Reagan. And USAopoly. That's where I saw... Oh. USAopoly is the distributor, I think. Oh, okay. When you were talking about the name of it, when I was at work in Origins, mm -hmm. USAopoly was across, and I kept hearing people talk about Court of the Dead. Gotcha. So, okay. That, or something of the day. Court of something. So that's why yeah. I was... Okay. 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 So okay. it's a Project Reagan game, and USAopoly is the distributor. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, that's pretty good. Cause yeah. Which they've really upped their game is with distrib distribution and yeah. stuff. Um, Their first game was The Thing, Infection at Outpost 31. Probably okay. I, I wasn't sure so, if they had made anything prior. But here's yeah. the other neat thing yep. that I thought. They have, like, a world, like, set up, like, on, like, a website. And what you can do is, because the three factions are strategically different, the Flush faction is, like, extremely, like, cutthroat and mm -hmm. kind of an asshole faction. Um, what you can do is... You can take a little quiz online. It's almost like a BuzzFeed quiz. It's not right. like the most elite thing. But once you go through that, I think it's like five, maybe ten questions. It'll tell you, oh, play this faction. I, th I just thought that was kind of neat. Yeah. Like, you don't have to, but it's like, uh, whenever we did the run-through for it, uh, it was a three-player game. Friend played Flesh, I played Bone, and then Cat played Spirit. Um, and just the different abilities. It's just it's just nice. Like, I, I think this game is really solid, so... That's my number nine. Yeah. Court of the Dead. That probably would be one I'd like to try it <laughs> too. Um, all That's right. probably going to be a common theme between us. It's like on my list. Oh, yep, I, I want to play that. <clears throat> all right. Number nine for me is a Kickstarter. It's Football Highlights 2055 or That's 2052. Funny. 2052. That's funny. Yeah, I expected <laughs> this to be on your list. Um. I'm a big fan of the Baseball Highlights 2049, I believe it's the date year. Those years always throw me off. But um, both of them, the, ba the Baseball Highlights and Football Highlights, they take like the, this old style art and um, they work in sci-fi into them. So like cyborgs, robots, humans. Um, but then they throw in real teams team names not, not real but then their, their players are really funny because um well like in the baseball game they would have the first and last name of two different like superheroes you know like okay. yeah, 
uh, Babe Mays or something okay. like that. Willie Mays and Babe Ruth would be Babe Mays. That's and funny. Be, you know, so they take like that, and the football did the same thing. Okay. So they're taking like you know Carson Prescott. There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two <laughs> halves make a good hole. Make a Dak good wince. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, um, makes good quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so on this game again. It's it's kind of got the same deal because in in baseball highlights the cards had dual purpose you know off offense you know, hitting mm. fielding okay. type stuff this one does the same thing there's offense and defense so All right. when you're playing cards you play a card to do an offensive play mm-hmm. and then uh, they then the you guys you already would already have a card down. Oh, I see. That the defense you have to kind of predict because then the card I played for offense mm-hmm. I'd have to use for defense. Oh, next thing I see. You put down. So, it's, so I could see what defensive play you play. Well, okay, right, well, we've already laid the cards out. Oh, I see. So, okay, but it's it's just a weird. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's a um, it's it's a neat deal. You run through a, a whole uh, game season. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it's really fast moving. Just like in and you have like you have highlights. like a really good like lineup, but for some reason, when you like you update, just, you play like shit, so you end up seven and seven. <laughs> yeah. 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 By the way, at the time of this recording, our both of our teams are like. The most underwhelming teams in the fucking NFL. But both of them still have a chance. They still have a chance. And they, they play tomorrow. They play tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the time of this recording, uh, our team plays tomorrow, and whoever wins... Well, if my team wins, then we win, the, we, win the, we win the division, and we go to the playoffs, and we'll lose first round in the wild card. If your team wins, you don't you all but, but clinch it. So, yeah. so yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so football highlights. Um, but yes, but anyway, um, and then what happens is after you've played your deals, it has the same point system where then you can use those points to recruit new players to come into your gotcha. team, and then, you know, more powerful players, mm-hmm. more unique uh, plays, stuff like that. Is it only a two-player game? Um, you can play. Okay, so it's only four, a two-player game. <laughs> but yeah, but what you like a tournament style, like oh, or whatever. It's kind of like All baseball right. highlights. You can play up to four, but there's you. Yeah, I've never played stuff. any of like the highlight um, games. I keep really seeing cool. that meme of that guy who won the yeah he's the the he's tournament the, and like I just I think that's uh, pretty funny. But the like, baseball highlights isn't they have it on the app like oh. um, for the iPad you can play it on that. Oh okay, They're really fast games. Yeah, to go through and play okay. the exact same. But um, you they release what they end up doing and they will do it with football. Baseball has every city that has a major league mm. baseball team is a t- has a, their own unique starter team. Oh, bad. And then okay. they even have the international stuff, so have like oh, Taiwan, wow. you know, Taipei, all these different mm-hmm. deals, and it's a unique starter team. They're all basically, they're just a little different. Gotcha. And then you <clears throat> go through and start recruiting players to your mm-hmm. team. Um, so I have all the baseball teams. Football came out with um, two, there was Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, I think. And oh, then, gross. And then, well, then Dallas and Philly were there we go. two of them. Uh, and then some others. KC wasn't in it, thank God. <laughs> but uh, New England and somebody else was. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, so, they'll eventually come out with all the other teams and everything. But but anyway, it's it's a really cool game. It plays really cool solo. It's hard as hell solo. Mm. I, I The first game I played solo, I lost like 49 to like I was in the teens. Oh God! Because <laughs> it's just brutal. Like damn the eyes. So you have to kind of really figure out mm-hmm. the game and stuff. But yeah, it's a good one. Good deal. Football highlights. Twenty fifty two. Good deal. My number eight is a game that did come out in twenty nineteen, but it was like in it's like January second. It was almost a year ago, um, and people seem to have forgotten about it. But they also released an expansion this year too, and that is Wingspan. So Wingspan, whenever it seems to be kind of the thing. So when when Stonemaier Games like announces the game, everyone just like fucking jacks off, and it's just like, and then they're like, oh, okay, let's move on. It's like, so I haven't heard any buzz from Wingspan. Hell, even the expansion that came out this year for that, the European birds, uh, no, no one's talking about it. So I, and and it had it was it was a huge buzz, but I think Wingspan is a fantastic game. I just. Um, I just got done uploading a, a review over the the expansion, and then I just uploaded also the solo variant and my thoughts on the solo variant. So, like, this is a really really slick, um, 
like like engine builder like about birds that's the thing that probably kills it for a lot of people but and something that i was like you know what it's stone i i have to give it a shot and i was pleasantly surprised one production quality was amazing first time designer did a fantastic job and like i kind of think the bird theme is kind of cool because you they, they put in little facts and snippets mm -hmm. of the birds and like little scientific facts about it and i think that that's pretty neat and they all have abilities that depending on where they're slotted then you can activate them and just basically go down the chain to either get you know food that you need to feed birds and then eggs which are like end game points and then um uh card draw so it's like it's a streamlined slick game that that i mean with the expansion of the europeans they added like ones that it increases like player interaction right. and they also have abilities in the previous game where it's like oh if your opponent does this then you can do this um so i i think it's really cool i i like it quite a bit and the solo variant is really good too so i mean there's really not a whole lot to say about wingspan like i think the reason why i mean it's at number eight is just because of the streamlined nature of it and the versatility of the engine building and i love engine building games so it's just like, oh, okay, so if I play this bird here and I play this bird here, then I'm going to get to, uh, whenever it goes down the track, I get, I'll activate this ability, which will give me, the, you know, so, right. like, and and then, like, the end game victory points, I think, are really cool, too, because, one, there's a percentage, so it's like, hey, have, have you know, birds with, that can hold four or more eggs, whatever, um, by the end of the game, and it tells you a percentage at the bottom of how many birds are in the whole deck mm -hmm. so you can be like so if it's like a three percent you're like well there's like th you know 250 birds here so that's not a whole lot right. but you get a lot of points if you if you are, are able to do it um or you can get less points if you for for the easier one um there's also engines that you can get that give you a bunch of end game scoring cards right. and last time cat and i played uh, the only reason I won was because I had more scoring cards than her. Because you have goals that you can meet at the middle per, uh, every round, and she beat me in every single one of them. And I was just like, I'm, I'm hoping my end game like cards end up panning out. It's it's so streamlined, so good, uh, and yeah, came out earlier this year. That was on my list of unplayed as well. Because every time I was going to pull the trigger, it never was available anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> that, so. that actually did cause a lot of buzz and, and fuss between people and Stonemeyer because mm -hmm. it's like, you you make like a hundred copies. Like, what the fuck? Like, right. So no one's able to ever get their games. Um, oh, actually, that was not a Kickstarter game either. Like, it wasn't. Yeah. Nope. So that was the other thing. Was the, the So the Tiny Towns wasn't Kickstarter. Hadar was the second game I was thinking that wasn't Kickstarter. Uh, and, and Wingspan, yeah, because I remember it was a, uh, actually maybe there's less Kickstarter games on here than I thought, now that I'm really looking at it and not talking out my ass. Uh, yeah, it was such a refreshing thing, and whenever I did the first discussion for it, I was like, I really hope they do other continent like birds, and then lo and behold, Europe came out, and then I believe there's still talks they're gonna do, uh, I think the next one's Asian? Maybe that's what we were wanting, was Asia birds, but... I think that they can do a lot of really neat things with like the different continents. So, so yeah, that's my number eight, Wingspan. All right, my number eight, I know you've played. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think you were a huge fan of it because you, I saw you sold it. <coughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I liked it <clears throat> because it's kind of a character creation game, um, and it's Call to Adventure from Brotherwise Games. Um, oh, Call to Adventure. I thought yeah. you said it's called Adventure, and I was no. like... <clears throat> <laughs> I'm like, what? No, I, yeah, I, I called, did not play adventure. Call to adventure. Yeah. Um, I was really hesitant on this um, at the start. I, I love the the box cover art's awesome. You Apparently, know, it's a the book. Of it. Is it a book? I, I, I feel yeah. like it was a book series. But um, I went. I played it at Jenny Hands. Oh, okay. Fletcher had it, and we played it. It was awesome. I thought that really. Just, um, just. Your decisions, the path you choose, you can go and you can be evil, you can be good. Um, and then it's you have set collection stuff going on because then you roll your, I guess, whatever runes. they call them, roll bones, roll yeah. runes, oh, what, yeah. you know, whatever. But they're not dice, it's like they're just double sided. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a, either a blank or some other symbol. And then there's like hits or mm -hmm. whatever. And the ones with different dice. I mean, there's a lot of different symbol yeah. stuff going on um, to know whether you are successful or not. 
and uh <clears throat> and it's cool because i mean it's it's almost kind of like a more it's a more thematic character creator than role player i'm not saying role player is by far still better way <laughs> way way much better like but frothing at the mouth but, but, you, but you're you're creating a character but you can kind of tell the story of how they became that character by the sure. parts you have laid down sure loosely i'm not <laughs> yeah. saying i'm not saying it's you know like here so <clears throat> call to adventure i it, it it's not a bad game for me it left a lot to be desired mm -hmm. like i would say it's more of a euro like role player kind of like yeah you for me you can but you had to make a lot of stretches like mm -hmm. there wasn't any like from here to here is how i got it's oh i started as a farmer and then I became a knight, and it's like, okay, I guess, like, you just kind of have to make those leaps to, to kind of make your character, but, but yeah. Well, and they have an expansion out, and I'm not sure what the expansion does. I think it just added either. more. It just adds more yeah. of, of the options just, and stuff. Yeah. But, um, but I thought it was unique enough. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. It's not a difficult game by any means, <clears throat> but, uh, but. You know, it's it's interesting because you can choose to go mm -hmm. evil. Well, that's kind of the <laughs> you know, it's a, that was like their whole point was at the end of the game, you you would tell the story of right, right. of your character, um, and you kind of had to like slowly just grab the cards and be like, okay, so this is what I did, um, and I don't know, like the I thought the rune thing was a lot better than what they did in Runebound mm -hmm. Third Edition for like combat and stuff, but yeah, like you would take a whole bunch of them and then like roll it roll it and then like attribute the different symbols and you're like okay i got a double here which gives me like mm -hmm. you had to meet a threshold um and you can only do certain actions based off your alignment so like yeah i mean it wasn't bad overpriced like it hell was. though yeah. so yeah that's that's I, I what mine cheap, like so. i didn't i paid a hundred for that and i think that's what killed it if i paid 50 i probably would have kept it but like it like i only paid like 20 25 yeah so. but i also got like the got sleeves the, cards yeah, and the playmat and all that and yeah. the expansion yeah. came with it too and i was but yeah so so the price point kind of hurt it even more for me and like a lot of times if i if i buy a game and i'm like like a, off kickstarter or something and i end up hating it i'm like well that's that's a risk i take but if I'm buying from like a almost another person or mass market i'm just like Man, that hurts more. Like Gen uh, Gen Seven, for example. Mm, you know, the worst yeah. game ever made. <laughs> That's not true, but but like the price point, it it it, it hurt more because it was mass market versus. Yep. So, yep. so that's kind of what killed it for me. Um, but I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, and it plays good solo too. Just so you know, that was a game I was gonna try solo. I yeah. feel like it would have been better solo. Yeah, it's not bad. We played it with four when I played it the first time. Mm -hmm. And it worked fine, but Did I it? played it solo since, and it's, okay. it is better solo. Okay, good deal, good deal. Uh, my number seven is a game that I had heard from uh, Rado's like anticipated games of Gen Con, and one that he was like, "You you have to go get this." And lo and behold, I went and got it. Um, and I remember talking to the guy like whenever I was buying the the set, I was like, "Oh, does the expansion come with it?" He's like. You got 30 locations. I think you'll have enough. And I was like, what the fuck you say to me? <laughs> like, I need it all. <laughs> and that is Edge of Darkness. So Edge of Darkness is basically the spiritual successor to Mystic Veil. Vale, uh, which, Mystic Veil vale was not a game I even liked. Um, like, when I played it, I thought it was your... I mean, it was the card crafting mechanic. Um, but I just thought it was kind of... I, th I just thought it was boring. Like, you just, oh, okay, I'm going to grab this and put it in here and... Hope I draw it, and okay, I'm, it, it was just it was just very like bog standard deck building, but then had the card crafting. Edge of Darkness, not necessarily flips it on its head, but gives you the versatility that makes it super exciting. So in Edge of Darkness, you have, I guess a, it's not really a campaign, but you have themes like in a in a in a book that are like, okay, for this section of the story, use these locations. So each location. That you can randomly put out and but or follow the story gives you a certain set of cards that you can draft, and they all have they're all radically unique. The different strategies you can go for are going to be dependent on the uh, the locations that are out. So, what makes this game even more unique is this is a shared deck building game. So you are as I'm card crafting, like you have your little logo, so you know it, that it's your card. You're not just all sharing cards. You, whenever you use them, they go into 
a discard pile, and then they'll eventually go go down a row that you will draft the cards to use for that turn. Um, and you can willingly skip like someone else's like card so you don't have to use it. But if if I use it, one to use your card, I have to pay you a coin for each section that I use. And money gets real tight in this game, and uh, then whenever I use it, it'll go into like your guild. So you are guaranteed to still use your cards, but maybe not at the time that you thought you were going right. to, because I can use them. Um, so like if you're building a certain way, like if you're buying city guards, which can give you some defense, it's like, and I'm not doing that, but your card's available and it's my turn. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take that, but you get a reward for it. Kat didn't necessarily care for that. She liked. She's like, well, they're my cards. I I really liked it. I thought it was uh, really unique. But the freedom of the card crafting is so nice too, because you, at the beginning of your turn, well, actually any time during your turn, you can just grab a, a a certain card and slot it into your thing. And like they have a cube tra tower, like that has three different sections and three different types of monsters that you can fight. That as uh, the more powerful your cards are, the more cubes of yours you're going to be dropping in, or you're going to be drawing from a bag and dropping in. It's just super good, and like there's so, like the solo variants really solid too. The um, the variety that this game offers, like, and I have the expansion for it, and then I went on. They did another one on Kickstarter that I also backed because um, more more cards, more locations. It's just going to make this game sing. So. Let me guess that was another one on your unplayed list. <laughs> yeah, I did hear you fucking something. Loser. I did hear something interesting though, is that uh, Yes, the cards <clears throat> are sexy. Edge of Darkness um, was the game that he's been working on the longest. Oh. But that the Mystic Veil was how he was perfecting the craft of that. Oh and, and, gotcha. And I I think they talked him into releasing it. Gotcha. To perfect it before the, to and to get it all tuned in before this before Edge of Darkness, Edge of Darkness came out. So it was almost kind of like a way to like get test it the out waters there and test it before. I, mean, I don't whether that's true or not. I don't know, but that's right. something they were talking about on a podcast I was listening to. And that's stuff. interesting. And, yeah, I mean that that would kind of make sense because, like I said, I did not like Mystic Veil right. really at all. And they released a bunch of expansions for Mystic Veil that probably made it better, but. Base game Mystic Veil vale was so boring. Edge of Darkness, I was just like, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm into this. Like, it's 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 so good. Uh, so that's my number seven, Edge of Darkness. All right, my number seven probably would be higher. I won't, but I've only played it one time. Gotcha. Um, and it was, and I was horrible at it, but I know <laughs> it's going to be a good game. Uh, is Reavers of Midgard? <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, didn't play. I didn't play that one. Reavers of Midgard is in the same universe as Champions of Midgard, which is a very highly ranked game for me. I'm not going to <laughs> go into that. Uh, yeah. But but um, so it uses the same art. It's got but it it changes the game enough now that you're not. Um, how can I say it? It 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 changes it into more of a you have your own Jarl or your own. Faction type person, okay. whatever, whatever they, whatever they call them, and um, but you have these uh, reavers that are super powerful type deals, and you're going out and you're raiding and you're doing stuff. Mm -hmm. It so it changes the style. You're not going out monster hunting, you know, oh, okay, and trolls and all that jazz. You're gotcha. more, it's more grounded in like right, reality. Right, right. Um, I mean, there's some, some this spiritual stuff and everything still too, mm -hmm. but not nearly as much as champions. And gotcha. I. What I found about this one is if you didn't like Champions because of maybe it was too random. I mean, this one has its randomness, but it's yeah. not not as bad. You know, you're you have your little ship. You're putting dice on your on your ship. You can only hold so many. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll have your leader Viking, um, and uh, you're just battling it. it. It's it's like I said, I I need to play it more. Mm -hmm to really get a, a good grasp on it. I yep. know it's going to be good. I mean, I got totally garbed in, in this <laughs> when I played it. Um, just because I think I was trying to play it like Champions. Mm -hmm. um, so it will definitely be one that will climb more as I play it. Okay. Um, but I bought retail versions. I don't have all gotcha. the... All the, all the I, fancy I stuff that right, Kickstarter right, right. gives everyone. Um but uh, you said you hadn't played it. Mm -mm. 
nope, nope. I mean, basically, I mean, like, it was just one of those things that I... It, I just yeah. had no interest in even even trying. My it. guess is, you, I think you'd like it better in Champions. Really, just because I mean the way more, it sounds it's like more methodical and more okay. Like, you know, your your decisions are it's more thinky, I guess. Okay, like in Champions, you know, you're rolling, you're going out and doing sure. your stuff, you're going. This mm-hmm. one, you can really like actually strategize. Yes. And, okay. Yeah. So I think you'd like it better. Okay. Anyway, but but yeah. Awesome. Reverse. Awesome. My number six is a game that I guarantee that you have not played. I don't even think it'd be on your list of games that you would want to play. Um, and at the time, like, whenever I was making whenever I played it, I was like, oh, this is going to be top three for sure. Well, clearly it's not, but still such a solid, really good game that, I mean, everyone I've played it with doesn't really care for it, but that is Black Angel. <laughs> So Black Angel also, I don't think, was Kickstarter. Like No, it just came straight out. Yeah, it just came straight out. So so. It looks cool, and I wanted to try it, but then you're telling me I wouldn't like it. So I, I don't... I, don't I really don't... Did you Have you ever played Twa? No, but okay, I wanted to I haven't try played it. Twa either, so yeah. apparently this is kind of like a, an inspiration of really? Twa. I think it's the same... I've, I feel like it's the same designers, um, but I don't quote me because I'm not the best at knowing mm-hmm. who designed what, but... Uh, Black Angel is a phenomenal dice drafting game that takes some takes a little bit of elements from everything. The Twa with the the shared dice, like I can use your dice if I need to, mm-hmm. um, and things like that. And then also another game that I missed out on playing last year, Selenia, which used a like a mo- a moving track. Uh, so in Black Angel, you are playing like an AI trying to get uh, the ship to to a planet. Um, and and on the way you're being attacked by by I think they're called reavers. Funny enough, mm-hmm. uh, but the the location of like it's it has so many moving parts. Like you have your own mini game because you can like use these dice to get these upgrades, which allow you to whenever you you, add, you play a card to activate like a row or column, then you can trigger uh, the the upgrades in that. And then slowly as you get more upgrades, you'll slide them out. And once they fall off, then you can put them in a slot, which will be end game points. Um, you are playing location cards out in like space and they're like missions that you can send your your little robots out to go to go do and like that can potentially cause the reavers to attack your ship which can make other areas more expensive or it can slowly lock out areas so then mm-hmm. people aren't you aren't able to do anything so then you have to do an action to clear them out and which is good because if you can clear out those cards, then because you have colored cards, and it's like I'm gonna play a yellow here. Well, you can only activate your yellow tech, but if you play a reaver card, you can activate everything in that row and or column. Um, but these locations can be like, okay, if I go there, like some of them are like instant bonuses, but others are like if it falls off, then they trigger, and you can get victory points for that, or more robots, or or uh, or whatever. There's more, I think, crystals and things like that. But over time, the the Black Angel is going to slowly move, and then the you know the track will flip, and then it's like more planets can be there. Um, it is such a like thinky game. You would almost think it was made by Vila Lasarda, <laughs> just by how weird the the game feels. And it's like because when you roll your your dice, and that's okay. Well, this is what I got, and if you roll like a six or something, then it's like crap, someone might use that. And they pay you, like, a, a crystal to, to use it. And then, okay, well, I don't have that available. But we played, one of the games we played, everyone was rolling like shit. So it was all low numbers. And it's like, all right, I don't, I don't, I don't want any of your dice. But the free-flowing nature of, like, okay, do I want to give them something to use what they got? Or should I just use my own? Do I want to activate this location uh, to be able to boost my thing? How am I going to push my, my tech off to be able to rally and or and get the get the end game points and you want to get the card <laughs> the card engine going to be able to place over here there's so many it's almost like a, an amalgamation of like three different mini games that all cohesively tie into one solid game um the so see i mean this this year for me it was like the solo year because i was really i'm really trying to like mm-hmm. jump into that so the solo variant for it is really solid too uh yeah, 
Yeah. Black Angel. Black Angel was a wonderful surprise, and I was really happy I was able to get a copy at Gen Con because I knew it was uh like high on people's lists but they they had they had more than enough and i don't know if they're gonna do any expansions for it i don't really feel like they need it because whenever you're getting your te tech like technology like you can either play they like they have dual sides um that you can also like you know choose which one that's like right. a variant but like normally just the the simple version if you just take what you get which Connect, I feel like actually hurts you the most because there's strategies you want to go for that you might not be able to get from technology. It's it's really, really good and one that I think will stay in my collection for quite some time because it's at this point in time, these are the kinds of games that right. I'm into. Good. So, but that's my number six, Black Angel. All right. <clears throat> my number six is one that would probably be in my top one or two if I would played it more. Okay. Um... I, I know I'm, it's going to be really good for me. I just have only played it a couple times, and both times solo, um, is Era Medieval Age. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And it is... Which one's this one? This is, this the, is the one that's called, like... Roll Through the roll Ages. Through the okay. Ages. It's the same, same guy. Someone just commented... Uh, what's his name? Shane? I think his name's Shane. He <sighs> just commented on our latest top, top 100, and he mentioned that it's really good solo. Yeah, it's, so. it's it's just as I mean, yeah, it's in it. What I what it's it's a way it's an overproduced version of those other games because like the the roll through the ages bronze roll through the yeah ages, roll through the bronze ages bronze age, age. <laughs> was all wood like you had wood dice you had a wood board wood pegs and that's what you did. Now this one, you're rolling dice. You have your own bright yellow peg pegboard in front of you. It's used to bright track yellow. Of yeah. Why? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's used to keep track of your resources on the side, and you, it, they've actually had stickers that you put now, mm. but initially they didn't. And oh, okay. It was something they fixed. So, and so that way you can read it better. Gotcha. And all the stuff. So you keep track of your deals, but then when you build buildings, they're actual, all of them are 3D buildings, mm. plastic buildings of That's all different shapes, and you, you, you put them out on there. So by the end of the game, you have a, that's pretty cool. You have a kingdom, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. So it actually, because that was one of the things, the the Roll Through the Ages games, you were just crossing off squares. So mm -hmm. when you cross off squares, oh, I built that. Oh, yeah. I built that. Now it's like you have a visual representation of everything that you've built. Oh, okay. Um, so you can, That's it's, cool. it's neat, you know. Yeah. And and you score points for different stuff. It's got the same, I mean, you need to feed your people. It's got the whole... Plague! It's got plague. It's got the it's plague. Got the plague stuff Fuck still. this game! <laughs> um, but it's, it's, uh, it's the same kind of thing, you know? I mean, you can push your luck and try to get four skulls or whatever. Mm -hmm. to, I can't remember. The, I think it's four. To make it where everybody else gets... That's right. ...damaged, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, it's the same style of game. They've just pumped up the production value. Mm -hmm. um, is it the same company? No. Or does it, okay, I wasn't sure. Because it was, it was Eagle Griffin that did the roll through. Really? Pages. And this is uh, so funny. Pegasus Spiel, I believe. I have it written down here. Uh, yeah, Pegasus Spiel. Okay. As you did this. Um, but uh, it's just a really neat game. I mean, like I said, it's overproduced. It, it, it doesn't need to That's be that. They could have just done it with a little deal again, yeah. but I think they need But it's like at that point, it's like, well, I'll just buy Roll Through the Ages right. for seven it's expensive. cents. Like if you bought it MSRP for mm -hmm. this game, it's it's like, I don't remember, like 80 bucks Damn. for a roll. For a roll and write game, essentially. More or less. A roll and build. build. Well, with this yeah. one, yeah. Um, but if you buy it, the right, you know, you buy it on the right online deals right you steal like, it i think mm -hmm. i paid like 50 for it yeah you go to a convention but... and steal it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no it's, it's, it's wonderful it's and it's gonna go higher on me because it's such it's uh, it's a place awesome solo and with multiple players mm -hmm. it plays up to four i believe that's how many pegboards you get to start gotcha. with right yellow um, that's gross that's, it is I, I don't know why they chose yellow as the i feel like and here's this is, this is actually a good thing but i feel like a lot of games are now starting to take into consideration colorblind players mm -hmm. um now the board that that means fucking nothing well, i don't know why they chose bright yellow but i mean i feel like there's a lot more games coming out where you're not getting your generic or your standard you know red yellow blue like you're getting right. like misty pink or something and you're mm -hmm. like Okay, so, but which is a good thing because right, right. we've played with two colorblind players, and mm -hmm. it like you never take into consideration, like you really take your eyesight for granted. But they're like, I I can't play this game, like right, <laughs> like 
you have to really sit there and be like, okay, so if you look at the pattern on the cards, up at the top right corner, there's a little dot. The other cards don't have this dot, so they, yeah, yeah, exactly. they're like, <laughs> oh, we'll play. Um, but that's gross. I don't want to play it now because it has bright yellow you, boards. You'll, you, you'd you like it, though. I, I think I think you'd like to give it a shot. I mean, because the games I, are quick. I'll give every game and, I'll give every game a it's, shot. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, I just got so fucking screwed in Roll for... I got, like, yeah. plagued. Like, I didn't even try to push my luck that game, I don't think. I, I think I literally just got plagued, like, three times, and I'm like, there's no fucking point! I can't come back! Yeah, I just like the 3D. Yeah, that is really neat. Of it. it's, it's pretty neat. That is really neat. My number five, so last year in 2018, I keep my my previous list. There it is. I had two games on that list that were in this theme. So uh, and so this year I only have the one, which makes me happy. But this is such a unique and, and awesome game uh, called Detective City of Angels. So like I mentioned, last year came out Detective, a modern crime board game, and then and then Chronicles of Crime. Mm -hmm. Um and then Detective City of Angels came out, and I was actually kind of worried at the, you know when I realized it was about to come out. I was like, man, there's so many of these kinds of games out, but all three of those, going back a little bit to last year, are so good and so unique in their own way that like I. But I love that kind of theme. I love the who done it kind of mm -hmm. figuring out. But what those other games did, this game is radically different. This is essentially a role-playing experience of, of of like Sherlock Holmes or something, uh, where you're like a gumshoe set in like the 50s, no, not 50s, 40s, 40s. 40s. Yeah. Um, and you are playing, like one person plays the chisel, and they're the ones that are kind of, they know the story, they know, who, they know you know, the end game of like, okay, well, this is how, the, you know, this is, you know who did it they did it with what and they have a stack of like all the different options and all the different cards and and the other players are it's not competitive or it's not competitive it's not cooperative either so if it was right. me you and another person you guys are actually competing against each other to kind of undermine and you can find information out that the other person can't and so whenever you are like going and talking to someone then like, you're like, oh, I'm going to talk to Bobby, and, like, I have options of what I can have Bobby tell you if I'm playing the chisel. Right, right. And then you can either take that for face value, or you have the ability to kind of push them. And if you push them, and I, and I didn't give you all the information, then it's like, okay, here's the right information. But if you did push them, and I did give you the correct information, then now I have, like, leverage on you that I can kind of stop you from doing certain things and hose you. Um, and... That's just really, really cool. Like no one, no one in, that that I know of has thought of like making a role playing detective game, and it's also one of those games that if if one person's really good at like figure, like you know connecting the dots and figuring and doing and another person isn't, the chisel can actually, and I did this during the run through because like one person was stronger than the other. Ooh. I you can actually like almost like make it way more difficult for them and easier for the other person so if one person so i can just give them the best answer and help them catch up while also make the other guy you know really try to fight for for the information so right. yeah the chisel has a lot of control the role-playing aspect of it is really neat um it is kind of one of those games where you have limited playthroughs because especially as a chisel because there's no suspense you you know who did it but, <coughs> excuse me, you're fine. At the same time, <coughs> this game comes with a cooperative variant. Yes, that was what I would be interested uh, in. That you would think, because there's a lot of times where it's like, and I saw this fucking on a Kickstarter the other day, I don't remember the game, but it was like, oh, it has a competitive solo cooperative. I'm like, you don't know what game you're making. Like, and there's a lot of times that that happens, and it's like, okay, so you have a half-assed competitive, you have a half-assed co-op, and you have a half-assed solo because you try to appease every group, and you just didn't make one good game. Here, like the cooperative is just as good as the competitive, like, mm -hmm. and and even matches up with the other ones, Sherlock, Chronicles, all those, like, because all those are fully cooperative. Here, if you really want to play cooperative, by all means, like, you're not, I like. You're not missing out, but if you have the ability to do that role playing with the chisel and stuff like that, that makes Detective City of Angels unique. Very, very happy with this. Like, I mean, it's in the middle of the games of 2019 because I love that theme, love the uniqueness of it, and uh, they also have an expansion coming out too. So, 
Uh, Van Ryder Games, man, like they're they're unique. They are unique. They don't have one lane. Yeah, you know they have the big score. They have mm-hmm. those. They have the graphic novel books. They yep. have you know, hostage negotiator. Yeah, you know, it's they make solid, yeah, unique themed <clears throat> and unique mechanic games. And it's funny because, like, you have the big names of companies and Van Ryder. Like, I don't feel like they have that. I don't think a lot of people really recognize it. Like, oh, that's a Van Ryder game. I have to get it. But they always make good, good, fun games. So, I don't know. I don't know. They remind me of how Stronghold used to be before they really blew up. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <coughs> that's a good point. So, I don't know. We'll see how Van Ryder keeps going, but they're pretty solid. They're pretty solid. So, that's my number five, Detective City of Angels. All right, my number five I know you don't like. Um, really? Yeah, you made that clear I think at one point or another <laughs> um, and it is Lord of the Rings Journey to Middle Earth okay. <laughs> um, I like Lord of the Rings not as, much, not as much as you which is maybe why I like the game better than you because maybe you know <laughs> funny enough that's actually not the reason why I don't like that game oh really yeah I- I didn't know if it was because you're such a Lord of the Rings. No, no, I thought it, it did a, the Lord of the Rings fine. I mean, clearly they weren't going to be getting right. Like, I mean, they had the na- some of the named right. characters, but I, I mean, if they had followed the story, you know, mm-hmm. I'd be like, this is fucking stupid. Let's go well, and I think play the game or watch play the game. Watch I think the movie. reason it's up here for me is because, um, again, solo play. Mm. Um, I can't play. War of the Ring, Battle mm. of Five Armies, stuff like that, solo. Sure. Real, you know, so it's like, and then I had the the card game. Yep. And, you know, and it's kind of a time suck of building decks and stuff. So That's this true. was a, a way I could just sit down, mm-hmm. pull up the app, get rolling, you know. Yep. So I'm able to play Lord of the Rings by myself, multiple characters, and just go for it, yep. you know. And I, that's why it's high up on this list is that, you know, yep. if... If there was other options, it wouldn't be. Mm-hmm. But this kind of fills that hole for me because Mansions of Madness is one of my favorite games as yeah. well. So I'm, it was a nice easy transition going from this to that. That's true. Um, I will say the Lord of the Rings app is better than Mansions right, of Madness. Right. They they really knocked it like kicked it up a notch. Right. So I mean that's the that's the main reason. Yep. Solo play only. I've never played it with more than one more than solo play. Okay. Um, it's just one of those things. I just sit it down, have the box sitting there, and I just go. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, and it has its issues. Yeah. But, but it's it's my Lord of the Rings game right now. So yeah. I I don't hate that game right. by any means. I think like the app was was done very well. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked it quite a bit. I, I mean, because it did a lot of the campaign management for you, and it's just like, oh, here are your XP that you get, and the app manages all that, and it's 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 glorious. I found it to be, ex- and I, I didn't play it solo, so maybe I would have liked it a little bit, but I played it with two, mm-hmm. and I found it to be incredibly boring. <laughs> like, I, I, like, hated the, the 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 slow pace of the campaign of the of the missions like i thought the i also thought that cuz unlike with mansions you have and of course people are going to compare the two it's inevitable right um with mansions i felt like you did more on the board like you still like and then, like i'm a huge advocate for apps so don't misconstrue mm-hmm. that but like i feel like that whenever you looked at the board the actions that you took like actually made thematic sense like but in Lord of the Rings it's on you're not in a house you're in like a, a you know huge field so I felt like you were like it was just weird like you were this massive ass mini in on this I thought the, the art on the tiles were actually, was actually kind of bad too because it was just it just it was just blurry right. um and you were just like okay I guess I see a flock of birds I it, I just couldn't mm-hmm. get immersed into it which you think I would being in Lord right. of the Rings but the one, the one thing do I think it. they're missing the mark on right now, though, and the reason that this could fall off, is expansions. Yeah, I mean, you know, like yeah. I mean, I had they had that one little one, and I don't even know if it's out yet. I think it is. Okay. Maybe, <clears throat> but know. it's like, yeah, you know, like think about what they did with mansions. I mean, you know, pump some stuff into mm-hmm. this. You know, maybe mm-hmm. live, liven it up, get some more stuff. I, I will say, playing it solo with two characters. It's not. I, I could see how it would be boring going mm-hmm. if you're like, let's say you and Cat were playing. Yeah. The stuff, but when you're controlling two characters, you're constantly you, you, you're, you're always going. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's. <laughs> I, I I did like the the success combat rate with the deck. Mm-hmm. I thought. I mean, they had good mechanics. Like it all just came down to 
one, this feels like a very pasted on theme. So, like, I wasn't, it's not like I was like, this isn't Lord of the Rings, but I mean, it really wasn't Lord of the Rings. Right. And it was just boring. So that's kind of where it was for me. I'm not sitting there like, that's the worst fucking game I've ever played. But, well, that's good. That's good that, I mean, I'm glad you liked it. Um, all right. My number four was my number three um, at one point, but it got pushed back. <sighs> This is like these other like seven games. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. Did my math right? Yeah, um, like the four and up just are so fucking oh, good. Gotcha. Um, and this is gonna be our crossover without a doubt. Um, and uh, it is Sorcerer. So came out this year, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's on the crossover. I was expecting. Really? So. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Well, yeah. Uh, so Sorcerer is so fucking good. Like, like it was actually a surprise for the year. This was Kickstarter, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, just one. I'm, I'm trying to because like basically all the great games I'll, are Kickstarter. I'll, I'll talk about it later. <laughs> Some stuff. <I> um, <laughs> but this was a game that you had told me about, and I'm like, I have no idea what this is. I happened to see it on on the Facebook group, and I was like, you know what? Sure, I'll I'll give it a shot. And had played it, and basically this is a, 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 a combination of a game that I very much like, but is dead in the water for from Plat Hat, Guardians, um, Magic the Gathering, and Smash Up are like the three games that I are like, okay, with a very dark fantasy setting, which I love. Yeah, um, that's good stuff. And basically how it, how it takes all three of those is Smash Up, you have your, and like I mentioned, he'll talk about it later, probably in greater detail, <laughs> But you have your mage, so sure. you have your lineage, you have your other stuff. You have three decks that you, you have, like, there's like ten of each almost. And you just pick one from each, shuffle the deck together, and you have three abilities that kind of tell you who you are, where you're from, and what you're about. Um, and then you have your deck. And it's it's I play a one v one. You can do a like kind of like a battle oh, arena. Don't do it. That okay. Way. Don't <laughs> I didn't do it that I way. didn't think it was gonna be any good. Uh, most games I fi I hate that. I wish that people would just be like, look, well, it's two players. Here's the deal. <laughs> it it's, it works fine. Oh really? It's just it 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 extends the game. Oh, so I long. see. I see. That's the disc wrong. I mean, you, it plays fine. Okay. But I mean, but it kind of like extends the game. Add, that just shouldn't... making it a three-player game mm. adds an hour and a half mm. almost. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. Yeah, because I, I even I hate <coughs> it. Are you okay? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I hate it when magic, <laughs> like Magic the Gathering, goes longer than it needs to. Because I'm like, yes. God, just end already. Um, but in Sorcerer, anyway, so you you combine this deck, you get a completely unique like combination of cards, uh, and I. And then you're 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 playing these cards in certain areas, and you're battling basically like like in Smash Up for a breakpoint that you're attacking the player. And a lot of people hate this game because of the randomness of the dice, which is funny because you think I would also hate that. Right, right. But I think it works because there's so much mitigation. Hell, even some combination of deck cards that you get are even more focused. Like one of the uh, in the run through, uh, mm -hmm. the friend was focused about getting omen tokens, and I yeah. and. Man, he almost milled me out, and I was like, uh, I might not swing this. He, uh, you can just definitely tell because the creator was a professional magic player, and um, the guy I was playing with is a huge magic player himself, and he, re he recognized the name, and he, you could definitely tell inspiration from magic was put into this. Um, Very much so. Which makes a balance too, because he knows. Okay, well, this is going to be good against this. Well, and the guy he tests with, I can't remember his name. He's a magic guy too. So okay. there's two magic guys that yeah. are constantly doing yeah. all that development. Yeah, and so it's it's just fantastic. Like, it's. I mean, for for my friend, it was a ten out of ten. Like like nobody's business. Yeah. Um, yeah so it's a and. Like the dark fantasy setting is really cool. Like you, you can have like equipment to boost your characters. The like I mentioned, the dice combat is. I mean, it would have been nice if it was a little bit better. You know, like if you actually attacked opponents. But mm -hmm. the way that it works is because you're not attacking another player. You're not attacking his monsters. You're fighting for control of the base. So whenever you're rolling dice based off the the card you're attacking with, it's like oh I got three hits. Well, they can choose to assign it to the base or to their monsters to try and weaken them. But if you get if you roll criticals, then you get to pick where it goes. It's such a solid game. I haven't played it enough because there's like 
a billion different combinations that I can't tell. I can tell you what my favorite is. You have all the stuff that's yes, out. Yes, I have everything, right? everything that's out for it. Um, the only negative that I have for it, and I think they're working on it because they're about. To, you mentioned they're about to go back on Kickstarter. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about is it. I want. <laughs> you're like let the expert fucking. No, 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 no. I don't know. How, <laughs> yeah, know. is. I just I I want locations because all the locations except for like two just do nothing they're just there yeah I I want locations that do abilities um oh and also how it's like guardians is because you you assign people to a certain place and you have your special abilities um yeah so sorcerers a uh, phenomenal phenomenal you know head to head card game that was extremely surprising and <laughs> it's so good it's so it's only good though if you like smash up and magic really guardians is the third game i throw in there because i want guardians to come back but <laughs> it's not gonna so that's my number four sorcerer all right well my number four was the one i thought we were gonna cross over oh. on. <laughs> <clears throat> um so i thought it would have been funny if we crossed over on this gotcha and it is imperial settlers empires of the north did not make the list um this game uh, well, we we played it mm-hmm. for the first time here. Um, it's I've keep I've been playing it more mm-hmm. and more, and it's almost it's almost a past regular Imperial Settlers for me. Um, not quite. That's it's, surprising. It's, it's getting there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have any of the expansions yet, like the Japanese. Yeah, done the Roman. They, I don't think the Roman's are, out yet. No, it's not. It's but announced. They announced it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just like it because um, the, it takes the deck building out of it, which you, you didn't have to deck build mm-hmm. in Imperial Settlers, but it's like you just take a deck, mm-hmm. you, you know, you play it. Um, it brings in a little bit of spatial stuff because you, know, you can move your ship, you know, you can do your ships. Yeah, you send can, your ships out. It has your action selections, so you have to, mm-hmm. do, you know, it... it it changes it enough, and I don't know if it's just because it's still new. You yeah. Know, like, after it's been out for a while, I don't know which one would shake out. To I think it'll that. probably surpass, because if it's already getting there, just mm-hmm. with more factions, I can see that um, causing it to surpass. Uh, when we first played it, like I was like, I don't think I like this. Um, I have since played it more, uh, one for the run-through, and I have played it solo mm-hmm. um, quite a bit. And I played Imperial Settlers solo quite a bit too, and was comparing the two. Uh, Empires of the North is actually pretty a pretty solid game. Like it, it has grown on me quite a bit. Just didn't make the list. Yeah. Um. It's just, you know, well, Z thinks it's the yeah. Z or C A. He's gave it a ten. Not yeah. A ten. You know. Yeah. I was surprised with that. Um. I think it was his biggest thing was like it makes it like it just makes more sense like right. okay hey like you don't just get resources you mm-hmm. have to actually go out and harvest them and you all the resources you made you keep from yeah. round to round and all that all that is super nice um like and then once I played Imperial Settlers again after playing this one because like I I was like man there's really no interaction at all between players well there's really none in Imperial Settlers Not either. Really. Yeah. So that that argument went out the window. Yeah. So it, I think it, and it, like I said, it may be because it's new. Um, but as of right now, because mm-hmm. I Imperial Settlers has always been a top right twenty game for me, you right? Know, or whatever. <clears throat> like I said, it's it's this one hasn't surpassed it yet. Mm-hmm. I don't think. <laughs> no, I'm curious. Right. I think you haven't played the Japanese faction. No, that might be your deciding factor because your your favorite faction right, is right. Japanese. So if you play it here, you can be like, "Oh, this is way better." Yeah. So so we'll we'll see how it goes. But for right now, yeah. this year, you know, it was one of those yeah. that kind of popped in and surprised me. Sure. Was, yeah. One of the praises of Empires of the North is like in Imperial Settlers. Yeah, the fa- there are different factions and they do things a little bit different, but you can't really tell like all that much. I mean, you can clearly tell that there's strengths and weaknesses for each, but Empires of the North really accentuate the differences of each faction um and last time i played i played the bankers which are like the most advanced and i was like this is amazing because they're all about like storing resources right. and hoarding and then you just get like i was like just like oh yep more yep more points like just let's just keep going up it like they they're my favorite faction to play so yeah yeah just I mean, it's on my list of games that, uh, because what you wrote down, I think, was games that you hadn't played in 2019. 
I wrote down my list of games that didn't make the list that I had okay. played in 2019. Yeah, I just put ones I hadn't played. So, so Empires of North is on that list because I played it and it, it did grow on me. Just couldn't couldn't swing past the rest of them. Um, all right, good deal. My number three jumped to number three after I had played it because um, it it was the game that was my anticipated for 2020, and I ended up getting my copy and I was like, oh, okay, let's just go ahead and do that. And it's another Vita Lasarda game called On Mars. Now, Escape Plan also came out this year uh, by Vita Lasarda. And it's funny because I did not know Eagle Griffin Games made Roll, Roll Through the Ages. And now they just make these insane heavy Euros. Yeah. So I don't know what happened. Like, who, someone, some CEO got fired, and then this new guy comes in. He's just like. Well, Eagle Griffin does the. Uh baseball highlights and football highlights really too. they, they kind of have a weird that is that is stuff. very odd but <clears throat> so on mars escape plan originally was on my list and then on mars came out and it is so good like i i can't stress enough how good this game is um but also how heavy and thinky this game is like it it took a while for this one to even click for me. Like, it's because essentially there's two halves. So you're 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 colonizing Mars, but not in the same way you would with terraforming Mars. Um, like this is very heavy heavy Euro and worker placement. So you have two sides of the board almost. You have an on orbit or in orbit side where you have these five actions that you can do, which is kind of your setup. They're going to get you technology or, or yeah, technologies, blueprints, things like that. The things that you would do. On the other side of the board, right. which is build buildings, you know, make advanced buildings, you know, try and, you know, colonize Mars. And there's five actions there, five actions there. And, like, throughout the game, I was like, okay, I, I understand these five. I understand these five. I don't understand how they're clicking. Um, and that's kind of all of his games. All of his games, you're like, I get it. Like, I understand what each of these actions do. And then at some point, it's just like, oh, you do this because of this, and every single action hit, hit. Like he probably makes the most thematic euros that that I've that I, I believe has ever like been made. Because mm -hmm. most of the time it's like, okay, I guess I'll do this just to get some wood, and all right, now I have that. Like his games, it's like, oh, you need this, like because like like CO two for example, second chance. It's just like, oh, why can't I move that scientist up to that summit? Like, because it has to be, like, on a, like, in, like, a forestation plant. And it's like, well, why can't I send him to the, to the, you know, uh, the, the hydro plant? It's like, because he knows forestation. He can only talk about it. So, like, like, it, everything just makes sense in On Mars. Like, when it finally clicked, like, because I was, I was kind of, because most of his games, which I personally like with victory points, is end game. Like, I, I don't like a lot of games where it's, like, throughout, you're getting points throughout. And it's like, well, I have 60, you have three. Like, it's just demoralizing as you're playing the game. But I really love it, because he has some actions where it's like, oh, I'm going to get a few points here and there. And throughout the, first, the the game we were playing, I was at, like, maybe 17, and my friend was at... He, he was at, actually at 1 for quite some time, then he started gaining some. Cap was at, like, 10. He was at 10. And I was like, I might run away. But once we started doing end game scoring, it was like, boom, he caught up. And he, then he's ahead by 1. Then I'm ahead by 1. And it was, like, head-to-head, -head and... This game is, so, it's it's just, it shot up to number three. I was like, it absolutely had to make the list. Escape Plan originally did, but like, I wanted to accentuate other games. I didn't want to have two Vita Lasarda games. Um, and actually, initially, Escape Plan was the honorable mention, and Tiny Towns was number 12. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I'm going to put Tiny Towns up. I got to talk about it. Escape Plan is still really good. And his games, like I have Gallerist over there. I have Kanban over there. And I'm... Even though the Vinny culture exists, I, it's Vinny Little Sorry, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna look for Vinos, so I'm gonna look for Lisboa. Um It's it's fantastic. This is a game I did a no run through review for, um, but I'm gonna do a run through for it later. I just wanted to get the discussion up in time to to put it on this list, but God damn. It's so good. It's so good. So I mean, you can, you can go watch the review if you want to know my, my like all of our thoughts on it. But yeah, that's my number three on Mars, a game I'm sure I, I don't think you have any interest in any of his games. 
They all come with solo variants. I don't know if it's not interest. It's just I don't have the willpower to learn that. <laughs> that is fair. That's fair. You I will know. say, though, like, CO2 and Escape Plan have really good solo variants. So, yeah. uh, and this one comes with one. I haven't tried it yet, though. But... Yeah, that's my number three on Mars. All right, my number three is Star Wars Outer Rim. Mm, okay. One? No, I nope didn't never got around to it. This one, for all intents and purposes, as anybody that knows, it, this is the Firefly Killer. Mm, that's right. I mean, that's right. <clears throat> um, it's pick up and deliver. You're doing missions. Um, it's. It's not as sandboxy as Firefly. But I think that's kinda, okay. <laughs> you know, that's fine. Um, that's what Zaya's for. <laughs> sure. But uh, but you want to play good <laughs> games. <laughs> right. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it does a good job of of uh, keeping everything tight. Like, mm -hmm. any of the games I've ever played, scoring's always been really, really clear. You're upgrading your ships. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, you can be Han and you, you, mm -hmm. know, you get your crew and all that stuff. Millennium Falcon, you can be Boba Fett, you can do whatever, you know. Um, you can choose to bounty hunt, do all that fun stuff, which that's generally the route I go. Um, I've upgraded mine. I found um, ships. So instead of using, because it used to be a standee with your oh, personal space okay. on it, like Han Solo's yeah. deal. Now I have these little deals that you can slide the face in oh, that's and pretty the cool. planes on a stand so I've got the Millennium Falcon oh that's and neat got, you know different than the, than the Slave 1 and all mm -hmm. that stuff to move around so so um but it's Star Wars you, you go through do stuff it's um the solo variant's really cool that's the main way I play it um the AI is really good mm -hmm. in that so you know you pick your person yep and you pick their person and stuff and then they're they're actually doing stuff and everything and you're trying to beat them to the punch gotcha um so it's smart because they're actually doing missions oh that, 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 that is really neat i had heard that because you never played star wars rebellion right no which is really not. interesting because i i because i mean, I've owned it twice yeah <coughs> i had assumed or from what from what i understand is that star wars rebellion is you know four five and six in a box um Basically, what I've been hearing is that it's it's that, but the scum and villainy portion mm -hmm. of it, which it I think I think is a pretty cool theme, and I'm surprised at how well it was because, like, there, it always looked very linear just from mm -hmm. pictures that I had seen, and uh, but the way people keep talking up, I think it would be really really cool. Now, how many players? Did... One to four. Okay, and the solo is fantasy flight, right? Two, yeah. Yeah, that's really weird because the, they're not so much known for their solo variants. Yeah, this one, like, this one has a wonderful like the solo's awesome. Huh? It's, it's a good one. Um, that's interesting. But uh, you set up the 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 location, the rim, in like a half circle. Yep. Yeah. That's <laughs> you know, but there's a play mat I want to pick up that has the spots and it's gotcha. Uh, so are they always in the same order? They no. They oh, okay. Know. So, but anyway. Um, it's, it does a really cool job. If you're lucky enough to get solo with the, you know, cause you start off, everybody starts off with this basic ship. Oh, I see. And then you have to do stuff, upgrade it. You can, gotcha. you can buy it, you know, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So how many paths to like, like how many, how many ways to play yeah. are there? Cause it's scum and villainy. So I assume it's like, well, I can't be a good guy. Well, bounty you know? hunting. There's actually just doing smuggling jobs. Okay. You know, stuff, uh, those are the main two. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you can do thieving. I think you can do like heist. Okay. As well, it's but I, I but I think I think the the bounty bounty hunting and, and smuggling, smuggling, of course, which Han Solo the smuggler. Sure. So like that, but but um, but yeah, it's it's a good one, you know, and it's me being the Star Wars geek I am. Yeah, it's right up, right up there. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Good deal. So my number two is uh, a game that I was actually very surprised was not on any of the Dice Tower top tens. Um, another Kickstarter game that is going to have so much content in Wave 2 um, by Ludus, Ludus Magnus Studios. They're kind of an up-and-coming name with big, grandiose kind of games. Uh, and that is Black Rose Wars. So Black Rose Wars is basically your... Uh, your extreme of, like, Wiz War, almost. You know, Wiz War, you have the... It's like the, the you know... 
Baron Pretzel's kind of whimsical thing. This one is, is very much more serious. Um, but you are playing a mage that is trying to become like the leader of the Black Rose Guild. And it's, it's tile based, so the tile layout with every room that has something different. Uh, what's cool about this is that it's not like point, well, it's not like, okay, I need to kill you. It's point based. So it kind of has that same, um, oh crap, the adrenaline kind of thing where it's Ooh. like, if I'm dealing damage to you, I put my cubes on you. Whenever someone dies, then you get points based on, oh, well, I dealt the most damage. So stuff like that. So it's, it's victory point, uh, based. And so you play a, a special, um, not special, but like a, a mage that has a certain affinity. Now, the one thing about it is like there's really no difference to the mages, um, but there's so many different schools that have like dual uh, dual abilities that it's you 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 know dr you know, you don't draft it. You draw from those cards. You pick which spells you want to do. Whether it's a quick spell that you have to do uh, at some point, and then you could put one to three other spells face down, and they could be trap you know trap cards. They can be like just. Uh, just you know, wicked destruction spells, illusion spells, controlling like it's just the the you know variety of these decks like right. is is like Wiz War. It's like oh here's transmutation. There's crazy minis in that too, isn't there? Yeah, they're pretty good. Okay. Yeah, like uh, Lewis Magnus kind of does you know decent minis. The insert is really good, but they basically they make a really good insert, and then you have a shit ton of expansions. You're like, well, this is good. All right, so yeah. you, it 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 does kind of suck, but but so when so like if you're playing like the fire mage, he hasn't he like he has special fire spells in the fire deck, but mm. that's really it. Like he doesn't get any benefit for doing fire spells. That's one thing I kind of wish they had changed. But the combinations of <coughs> spells that you're that you're trying to do to accomplish certain tasks to either meet, you know secret objectives to get you points it's just it's so much fun like the just because i i played a character and i basically just did illusion spells because i'm like well that's not a school that's hardly in any any you know magic games i'll try that and you can get some really funny combinations of of spells like one time like like, because you have to, you can have line of sight, there's, there's like, certain, you know, markers, like, okay, I can only attack everyone in this area, and, and so on and so forth. But there was one where I was able to, like, Cat was, like, here, my friend Josh was here, I was able to control him, make him move into her and punch her, and it killed her, <laughs> which got me points for doing that. So you can just do, it's still whimsical in a sense, but the whole theme is more serious. Um... They have, like, these Black Rose spells, which are, like, uh, very difficult to get. You have to pay mm -hmm. quite a bit to get them, but they're one-time use, and some of them are, like, super, like, they're, they're super busted. Um, but they're only available halfway through the game, because there's three, like, moon phases. Right. So you have event cards that can trigger, so there's three decks for the different phases for objective cards and for events. So once a certain player reaches a certain amount of points then okay well now phase one's over now phase two cards are coming out and there's just so much content for it one thing that's really neat about the game is there's a black rose marker which as certain events come out then it moves up and i thought it was going to be like you had to beat it mm -hmm. but it's a, it's just a timer so as events come out it's like oh move it three otherwise it's like if it was relying on people right like it the game would take way way too long but it's like, oh, yep, okay, now the Black Rose got there before, you know, the Phase 2 before we did. Boom, swap it out. And once it gets to Phase 3, the game's almost over. It's so much fun. Like, you get points for destroying tiles, so you can actually go around that and be like, oh, well, I don't want anyone to use this, so you can start, okay. you know, destroying tiles. Like, there's destruction, there's conspiracy, illusion, uh, tran transmutation, or something about, like, nature, uh, divinity... Uh, necromancy, and I feel like there's one more that I'm missing. I'm trying to think of the colors, but then they have an expansion which adds like a Kronos, which is like a major boss, and then Medusa as a wizard, and another school. I think it's like it's like time manipulation or something. And then there's gonna be Wave Two stuff that has like Ezio from fucking Assassin's Creed. Oh, really? Yeah, I was looking through all the stuff and I was like, that's weird. how'd they get that? It's it's so good. This game is like like it was almost like an automatic like number two. 
and was another 10 out of 10 with my friend who plays Magic because it has that same kind of feel for it. I think actually Sorcerer passed Black Rose Wars for him, which I was very surprised because he was like enamored with it. But another Kickstarter game, really, really good Kickstarter game. Uh, that's my number two, Black Rose Wars. Right. My number two was my number one up until about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Damn. Um, and it's Sorcerer. <coughs> okay, see, I thought that was going to be your number one. That was, yeah. And I, here's the thing. I'm really glad it's not because I was worried that the fact that you've worked with them, I'm right, like, man, right. that's shady. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, well, and to be honest, whether I did or... I know. No, I, the game I, is still really, I have not really played cool. any other game as much as I have Sorcerer over this past year. Yeah. Because I worked for White Wizard Games mm -hmm. booth at Origins and uh, demoing this game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've played it. A ton. Well, or, or been teaching it so sure. many times. Um, and then I own it, and I've played it a ton prepping for Origins. i played mm -hmm. it a ton after Origins. Um, Who do you play it with? A uh, guy I went with. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he knows the stuff. Gotcha. Uh, like, it's too dark for my wife. Sure. She didn't really care for the Sure. I'm the sure your, dark. your kids wouldn't, kids wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't like it anymore. <laughs> they're too old to play games anymore. Aw. They're, they're not, it's, it's not cool. <laughs> <clears throat> but, um... It's not cool. No. But uh, but no, the, 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 like he's saying with Sorcerer, you know, it's it's the thing that was the hardest for new people to grasp is because you 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 choose a character, a location, and a domain. Domain. So, so you or a lineage. It's lineage, domain, and character. Yes, I, I was missing the domain um, part. But the the lineage is what sets up your. Um, style of wizard that you are mm -hmm. um so your wizard has an ability you'll have an ability from the domain you'll have an ability for that but what what's hard for people to recognize is you have a standee mm -hmm. and at the beginning of the entire round you have to place it in one of those three deals now those abilities can only happen where your person is yeah that's the hardest thing to yeah when you're teaching people because they're wanting to like use this over here and it's like nope 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 yep. it can only be done where your in fact sorcerer is that same rule <clears throat> because that's the one I tried to remember so much I mm -hmm. I was I was playing the game as I can only summon monsters where he was at right. and that's not true right, you can right. put them anywhere so I'm anywhere. sitting there and I'm like wait a minute <laughs> right. no it's only these <clears throat> stupid yes. sword icons <laughs> but I mean and and I Rob the creator he he has come up with so many cool lineages because, like the, the the werewolf one, you know, it brings in all the wolf phase, the the moon phases, you mm -hmm. know, and different your different stuff happens depending on the phase of the moon. The core box has the vamp, kind of the blood, blood, blood letters blood, or whatever, something like, like that. Yeah, like, like the vampire. So yeah, they had blown their own little blood tracker and. You just animalist, which yeah, is about like fire spiders, and just, demons. <clears throat> yeah, that's my favorite. I like the spy. I like the analysts, dude. Like um, I, I, I mean, that's the thing. I like them too. Like, yeah. but they're they're the mill. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. and they they I basically like take your opponent's deck and then boost their their creatures. And yeah. it's like, oh man. But it's hard. At least, have you ever seen anyone get milled out? Oh yeah, you have. See, yeah. I, I, he, he got my friend got <laughs> close. I think I had like ten cards left, and I'm like, man, I really gotta like yeah. sweep this game. Well, and you can choose to play. Short, normal, or long game, mm. depending on how you start your um, points to play to. Oh, really? And stuff too. Oh, okay. You, you can keep going. I mean, I guess so. Yeah. Um, because like the health of the bases, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've like, always done max. Like when we did when we did demoing, mm -hmm. we would stop. We would start them at like five. Oh, okay. Just to make it. Yeah, so yeah, to yeah, yeah. Get people out. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but no, anyway, what we were talking about with the Kickstarter, there's, and this is going to make me and any other solo people happy, is this, this, this Kickstarter that's going to be coming out here pretty soon is going to bring in a cooperative solo play mm. to, and it's story driven. Oh, that, that So you're going to be able cool. to have your created person and somehow, I don't know the specifics as far as how they're going to do it, but mm -hmm. it's going to end up being cooperative. You're still going to have your your creation of your wizard or your sorcerer and you're going to be able to take them through a story cooperative deal so it turns That's it really in, cool right so it turns it into the a way because one v one there's so much it's one v one it's hard to get some of those to the table necessarily sometimes um that when you throw in that word co-op 
you know. And, yep. and, they, and they've done this with every one of their, well, yeah, every yeah, one of their Star games. Star Realms. Because Star Realms and Hero Realms, they always start 1v1, and then they've thrown in that cooperative aspect. And yep. that's what they're trying to do with this, too. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, and you know, with, with them, they're going to have more decks. Mm -hmm. You know, Rob said they're going to, they, I mean, they've been testing decks and everything. They're ready to rock and roll with yep. More decks going to be great. More decks coming out. Loca uh, locations are the big ones well, for me, though. They have the Egyptian ones you can buy. I have those. Yeah, you have and those. those but, and they I mean, change a little bit of the powers a little sure, bit. Sure, but, um, I mean, really, it's like that's, that's it. Like, I think yeah. they need to have a lot more locations. I think, and I think they, with it, with it being a story-driven, I bet you they do. That's true. With, you know, and That's stuff. true. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a... The art is bonkers. It is so good. It is I, really my, my, good. Some of my favorite is the... Uh, as the uh, mental institution, some of the sick. Yes, art yeah, that. it's really. Gr That's the one I played. Was like that. I uh, like. I went kind of like a Catholic kind mm -hmm. of demon like feel, and I had the Targu. I think it's named it's Targu. Uh, the demon, the, like the demonologist of the mm -hmm. insane asylum, and I was like, it was, it was, it was a disgusting combo. Yeah. Like, I. Uh, and yeah, the art. I mean, the art can turn a lot of people off for mm -hmm. it because it is very like. Well, and that's what when demoing. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of the stuff I heard because people were like, "Man, it's just it, like," because the one they'd come up and ask, "Hey, is there is is it appropriate for a ten year old?" It's like, <laughs> just, <laughs> just don't show them the artwork. Well, and, and there isn't anything over. No, it's not like there's like nudity or anything right, or like right. it's, it's just, just really. It's, I wouldn't it's, even say it's it's, a, it's realism art. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, so. I wouldn't even say it's like graphic. It's not like you're seeing like just, throats cut or anything like that. Dark. It I, is dark. I don't know how to else to explain. Just look it up on the yeah. DVD. But and if you want to, uh, if you want a demo of it, come come by their booth at Origins. I'll, <laughs> I'll be there demoing. Shameless plug. I've already, I've already booked my deal. So. Nice, nice. <clears throat> okay, so well, I'm curious to see where your number one is, but. Can you guess what my number one is? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, it's Tainted Grail. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I could have guessed that at the beginning. <laughs> Here's the thing. Like, I was telling Kat because she she knew as well. Um, Tainted Grail to number one is so far ahead as number one from number two. Number Black Rose Wars might as well be number ten. Like that's how how good I think Tainted Grail is. Um, this game. Um, is just everything that I wanted it to be and more. So theme alone, you know, the Arthurian legend, the dark, almost like the Dark Souls, mm -hmm. kind of like with like the darkness, and you have to light the beacons to keep civilizations alive. Um, so the theme is just amazing. The sense of exploration, like seven, uh, Seventh Continent has, I was about to say Seven Wonders, uh, Seventh Continent has with the same. Now it's not as intuitive as Seventh Continent. Like, like when people say, oh, it's Gloomhaven, Seventh Continent combined, very loosely like the the idea of kind of both of those is really what they're what i feel like they're more talking about um but yeah the 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 card exploration where it's like oh if you do certain actions based in your story then now this location gets swapped out with another card and the back of the cards have like whenever you explore tells you a story and but man this this exploration journal is so well written this the like awakened realms is probably my favorite publisher like they, they are just so, so fucking good that I've only played one game. By you them. played one game by them, and their only game that I didn't even really care for was Lords of Hellas, and that was one of their earlier games. Um, but a lot of people really did like it. And I liked the theme and some of the ideas, but ultimately it fell flat. But the rest of them are just like through the roof amazing. So uh, this is a combat that I think you would like because you don't have like the hand because you hated the hand management of Gloomhaven where you can run out. There's none of that here. So whenever you're playing and you're you're doing combat, you have a deck of combat cards and diplomacy that depending on what you're doing, you can do diplomacy, which is a kind of a tug of war thing, and combat where you're trying to just gather a certain number of cubes. But you have abilities on the cards, but you're matching icons on the side that can either give you cubes, they can give you more cards, um, and then, or if you attach a certain icon, then you can play another one, and you can kind of chain reaction like that. But my favorite thing about that is not so much the puzzly nature, which is really good, it's that you can, kind of like with Call to Adventure, you can see 
like, oh, this is what I did to beat this thing. And mm -hmm. it, it, it adds an even more sense of theme to it. Uh, you have your own unique character that has, like, a certain, like, weird, like, history behind them that make them all super cool. If you're a certain character and you do certain actions throughout the world, then you can get a bonus in the exploration journal. This exploration journal is, is amazing. There's so many options to it. Uh, I've only, and the, here's the thing, I'm only in chapter two. Like, I only just beat chapter two. And it went in a direction that I didn't even expect it to go. And there's 15 chapters with the expansions that will be coming out in wave two for it. So, like, I mean, it was easily, like, a, a 10 out of 10 for me. And I was like... It, it's gonna be if something's drastic is gonna have to happen for me to be like, well that sucks, because one of one of the complaints I've heard is that there's things that you can do that end up being like dead ends, mm -hmm. and I hit and I kind of hit one of those in chapter two. Like I went to go to a certain location, didn't have the reputation because you have reputation and wealth and all that that can right. attribute to, you know, the story, and I was like, oh man, that kind of sucks. I travel all the way here. I'm like, but I was like, oh, okay, well I'll I'll figure something else out. And, and the, oh, I'll, I go here, and then it's just like, all right, this happened, and uh, that's the end of the chapter. And I was like, oh, shit. Hell, even in chapter two, the very beginning, it's like, well, you can go here, or here, or you can go to this island and figure out a different way to advance the story. And it's like, like it's, it's just wide open, and, like, I cannot praise this game enough, so... So I mean that's that's my uh that's that's my number one game of, of twenty nineteen. Yeah, I was I wanted to back it, but at that time when it was on Kickstarter, I didn't have because I, I would have wanted to get everything. Yep, and it was pretty. Expensive. Yeah, I got I I got everything. So that's for why it. I did not. I mean I I wanted it, mm -hmm. but just never. Yeah, and this is one that I'm doing a series on, on, and I'm doing it solo, and it's just I mean because it's kind of as open ended as Seventh Continent, where everyone can kind of do their own thing and. Um, like, oh, well, it's like, you don't really need turn structure, so doing it solo, I'm just like, yeah, this is this is way better. Uh, yeah, Tainted Grail. Like, I'm, it's, it's just amazing. All right. Your number one. Is, have I mentioned it before? Nope. No. You haven't played it either. Oh, okay. I don't think you have. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I assumed it was going to be Sorcerer. Um, oh, uh, Marvel. Marvel the Champions. Is that your number one? Yep. Boom. Um, I've been looking for a replacement for Netrunner. I know, I know it's not a competitive game, but um, I like LCG mm -hmm. games. Um, and I I wanted to like Arkham Horror. It wasn't that it was a bad game. It's yeah. just I have so much Cthulhu stuff. You know? Fair enough. Yep. And then they announced Marvel Champions. And I love Marvel Legendary. Mm -hmm. This is a different kind of game. But it's still... In a in a vein that I enjoy, so I've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally about a week and a half ago got it, and I, and I've been playing the hell out of it. Um, today actually in the mail, I will be getting the Captain the, America, the Captain America, the Miss Marvel, and the Green Goblin scenario pack. Yep. So all that stuff is waiting for me. Um, but it's such a such a cool game. Is it? Um, this is one of the ones that I missed out on because yeah. I just I couldn't I I went to go buy it the other day and it was sold at like yeah, it, and I was it's like it's hard to get right now. I'm like, well, I guess I won't be getting it. Yeah, I went through and pre-ordered everything mm -hmm. just to make sure I got it. But um the base box comes with five heroes and they're not the heroes you would expect. Yeah. You know, right off the bat cuz you have you have Captain Marvel which is in there because the hot like the movie being I oh, think yeah. just because that's uh, Iron Man, um, Spider Man, mm -hmm. uh, Black Panther, and She Hulk. And she -Hulk. <laughs> yeah, well, She Hulk came out of nowhere. Yeah, you know, it's like, um, but uh, they've already announced Thor um, is coming mm -hmm. stuff. But anyway, their the plan is that one one pack a month. Okay, that's kind of the plan now. Uh, Good deal. So. Um, Pretty much, it's a, it's a scenario card game, you know, and it's deck construction. Now, is it a campaign like Arkham Horror, or is it just like individual scenarios, <clears throat> kind of like Marvel Legendary? It's individual scenarios right now. Okay. They have campaign, they've announced that they're going to do campaign cool. expansions. Cool. 
there hasn't been one specifically announced yet. Yeah. But like they know. Okay. They, when I would have been fine with the individual scenarios. Yeah, when when they announced cool. the game, they said, "Okay, there's going to be campaigns, mm. and, uh, boxes coming out." Yeah. So that that'll be nice. It'll be kind of neat when you. Get, yeah, for sure. Um, oh, the Wrecking Crew. That's the other the villain pack that's going to be coming out. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> so you pre-construct a deck. So. Every hero is going to have their one set of cards that will be in any deck you have them in, and then they're going. And then you pick their aspect. So they have you can have aggression or um, justice or I can't think of the next one. <laughs> there's there's a couple different uh, leadership, um, and so then you can put the, any of those kind of cards into your deck. Okay. Then there's gray, base like uh, just like basic generic cards, cards okay. you can put. Um, and both, a lot of those though are just one per deck. Gotcha. Um, and but your deck can be anywhere from forty to fifty cards. Okay. Um, there's a debate, you know, people that haven't played card games are like, well, why would you just always do fifty? Because if you have to reshuffle your deck, mm -hmm. then you get penalized by a one event card. Oh, I see. But if you go with a smaller deck, you know, just like in Magic and mm -hmm. things like that, you, you're you get you're your... more you have a higher percentage of getting the cards you need mm -hmm. quicker. Especially if you're running Iron Man because he becomes a badass once you've found his all of his cards for his, to put his suit together. Once you oh, he doesn't have his suit, right? He's, oh, once you get his suit laid out, then he becomes a badass. That's <clears> awesome. Um, so anyway, what happens? What's cool is you you ha your character card is double sided. You have your alter ego, Peter Parker, let's say, mm -hmm. and then you have Spider Man. So when it's your turn, you, you, when you start the game, you'll start out on an alter ego. Um, the bad guy, let's say it's Rhino, because that's kind of the, He's like intro, the, the intro, the basic one, one right? Yeah. They have an agenda they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how many players, will depend on how many counters it needs to pass. If, okay. if he gets that some number of counters on that uh, agenda, you lose. Okay. If he kills you and all any heroes you have, mm -hmm. you lose. Okay. You beat him by beating him up okay and you can take away all of his hit points um but what happens is when you're in alter ego mode you cannot attack him oh okay uh you have an ability like usually it's a heal so if you tap him mm -hmm. uh it's a way to heal okay they have their own resource ability or whatever on that side but when it becomes the villain's turn he can't attack you if you're in alter ego mode i see but he can do a um, they call it thwart, a thwart action. Okay. It's for us, it's thwart action. It's for the villain. It's adding agenda counters. Okay. Um, so you get a card passed out to you, and there's little symbols on the bottom. So you get whatever his advancement is plus whatever however many symbols are, and it comes in face down. Okay. Um, but if you're in hero mode, he's not advancing the agenda. He attacks. Gotcha. So you, there's there's it's a puzzle in a way because you're trying to decide. Okay. I'm about to die, but he's also about ready to finish his agenda. So mm -hmm. I better flip over to my hero side yeah. or stay as a hero so he attacks me instead of making the agenda pass. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of a back and forth. Um, the way you pay for cards, there's no mon token money in the game. All right. You're using the cards you have in your hand to pay for cards that come out. There's okay. in the bottom left-hand corner of every card is a resource symbol or two or three it depends on the card so if there's a card that has a cost of three generally three is a pretty badass card yeah um you have to discard enough cards to to pay, be able to pay for it to pay for it and then you do it okay um it's and then you tap your hero can also attack so you like let's say you did an uppercut card mm -hmm. you pay your deals you play it do the damage, and then you can also attack or thwart with your hero. Oh, if I you see. attack, you're attacking him. If you do thwart, it's taking agenda counters off. Okay. The card, so That's it's pretty. Uh, there's cool. this balance there. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, but um, when you have the uh, uh, if let's say you have two people playing, Rhino starts off with he gets uh, 14 hit points mm -hmm. per player. So two oh, players, okay. 28 hit points. Yep. And you have to beat him twice. Oh, I see. Because there's like two cards worth. And okay. There's advanced modes. There's like ways you can pick it harder. Gotcha. Okay. Or whatever. And same with the agenda counter. He needs seven agenda counters if you're playing solo. But if you have two heroes, then it's 14 agenda counters. Okay. And so there's a lot of stuff like that. But it's it's a there's a lot of 
to and fro with it. You have to really play it, you know, mm-hmm. and then you can, you can deck build different ways to get okay. stuff. And it's, it, it fits that niche. Yeah. For me, you know, the deck construction stuff that mm-hmm. I've, uh, been wanting again. Um, and just more packs that come out are going to have cards that fit into leadership and aggression mm-hmm. that can go into your, with your leadership aspect when you're building decks yeah. for other stuff, you yeah. know? Um, so it's just, it's just going to get better. Yeah. I mean, this is, this game's going to be, if I hadn't already made my top 100 list, it would be rapidly moving up gotcha. just, just because it's, it's so wonderful. the big question is, can you, did this replace Marvel legendary? Like, no, no. Okay. They're different games. Are they? Okay. Cause this is, I mean, even though it's, it's, this is a scenario uh, and uh, this is going to sound weird. The scenarios you're focused on one guy, and it's deck construction. You like you're building a deck to go. Mm-hmm. There, to me, that's different than deck building sure. because there's yeah. a part of the game where things are out. You're buying yeah. stuff yeah. to come in. You have a lot of options. Mm-hmm. It's not yet. Okay. Now, after a year or two of packs come out mm-hmm. for champions. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Um, but, but there's right. so much for Marvel Legends. Yeah. And they yeah. just released a f- another one. Shield just came Shield, out. Shield, yeah. The Thor, Thor one's going to be coming out next. Did they, did they not have a Thor already? No, not, oh. not a pack by itself. Oh, this one's okay. going to have all the... This one's going to have, like, Hela and... Oh. As the villains and all that cool, stuff. Cool, they, cool, cool. Yeah, but... So, anyway, Marvel Champions. I mean, yep. if, if you are a solo player at all... Like, this game was built for solo play. Like, really? I think Arkham LCG kind of right, was, right. too. Right, right. I mean, you can play it with two people, mm-hmm. but just, I mean, I sit here and I'm thinking, God, how long would the game be playing Rhino if it's 14 hit points per person and you have a four-player game? Oh, God. I was God. like, oh, my God, how many <laughs> how many hit points? Are yeah. That? And, and, and it's just yeah. nuts. I think that's what, that's what, so I didn't get a chance to play Marvel uh, Champions, and I really wanted to, but like I said, I just couldn't get a, get a hold of it. Um, like what, what sold me on it one, because I'm a huge fan of Arkham Horror LCG Mm -hmm. and the fact that like Marvel legendary is a lot of fun, but it's more for, because of just the sheer amount of content with champions. It's like, Oh, but I, I, what if I want to play a specific hero? Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't do that in Marvel. You just control the amalgamation of five different heroes in champions. It's like, well, I want to play Captain America. Okay, here you go. Right. Like here's Captain America. And I will say that. And, and the, Fantasy Flight knocked it out of the park with this because, well, you play Arkham, you know mm-hmm. that. Netrunner and any of the LC, other LCGs that I've done, competitive or not, you had to buy three core sets to get a full play set mm-hmm. of, of everything. Yeah. Right? So, like with Netrunner, I had three and a half core sets that, mm-hmm. that I, so I could have three cards to go into my decks yep. and stuff. Champions. It was a little more expensive just to get the core set, but mm-hmm. it had a full play set of everything. Oh, that's good. So you only had to buy one core yeah. set. Wonderful idea. Mm-hmm. And then what you also have to do is, with Netrunner and stuff, you uh, would buy a pack and half of the cards wouldn't be useful. You know, like, right. you have to go and buy packs. Right now, the inclusive packs, like well, like you said, Captain America, mm-hmm. and then Miss Marvel came out. If you don't give a shit about Miss Marvel, don't buy the pack. Yep. There's no, there's nothing you like. You you can pick and choose what you want to mm-hmm. buy now. Now, I have I have a subscription through a online through Team Covenant. Okay. In Tulsa, so this any pack that comes out, they just charge me and just mail it to me. Oh, and, neat. and I get it on release day. Oh, that's pretty so I don't cool. Have to worry about ordering them. That's cool. At all. Um, it's a couple of dollars more expensive, but sure, it just comes. You know, that's kind um, of convenient. Right. Um. So, it, it's just one of those things. It's just you can pick and choose. They and I hope this is what they start doing with. LCGs, mm-hmm. you know, is figure out a way to get it done and start really, you know, just releasing packs that you can kind of pick and choose what yeah. you do. Um, I don't know much about Miss Marvel, but I got it anyway. Just right. Because, I mean, why not? Yeah, because not? I'm, someone else I'm might. a completionist. But, yeah. But you have those, and when you put the deal, if you want to sit down with somebody and they're like, hey, I want to try Miss Marvel, you just pick it out, hand it to them, and it's ready to go. Yeah. You know, and, and it's. I, I really think you'd like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, sure I, I would, too. Should, I need to bring it sometime. I'm sure I would, too. I, I feel like <laughs> it, it definitely would have made the list. But here's the thing, is looking back, 2018 had a hell of a year. 2017 had a hell of a year. Um, but like I said, these 10 games, like, like the, the, the companies that are going on Kickstarter, like, 
just know what they're fucking doing. Like yes. these, like for for my ten, my eleven, hell, even the the list of the the games I have here, uh, were just like, yes, this is a such a good game. Like my number one Tainted Grail was, I mean, that was like played it one, like like without a doubt. Mm-hmm. But the rest of them were so good. Like we're we're gonna do a you know a decade top ten of of the right, decade right. and. Whenever we're looking at the years, I was like, "Man, that's really good." But we we are truly like in the era of like phenomenal games, and it's not. Luckily, it's not just like overbloated with like certain certain genres. Like we're still getting mm-hmm. deck builders, we're still getting tile laying. Like right. those things that were created decades ago are still, but they're just refined. They're just like, "Hey, how can we make this unique and innovative?" It's yep. just. It's it's just fantastic. So, so that's our top ten of 2019. Um, because we don't do these live, we're gonna talk about like games that here, like games that would have made like well, not would have made the list, but but were considered for the list for uh, for us. And you're gonna talk about games that you hadn't had a chance to play, and I'll probably bounce right. off that too. Well, like like my biggest, I'll tell you right now, probably the biggest one that I didn't get played. I have it. I just never got a chance to play it. Was Paladins. Of the West Kingdom. You, oh, you didn't play it. I didn't get a chance to play oh, it. Oh, damn! I have it. I just never did get a chance before. Gotcha. Before now, so that probably would have been on there. Yeah, that was on the list for um, consideration of being on the list, but right. it just kept kept yeah. funneling down. And I just got Sorcerer City yesterday, mm-hmm. so yeah, that one may or may not. I, it has potential. Yeah, I got early on stories. Yeah, like that. That might have made it. Um, I. It's just I had so much. Valhalla was twenty eighteen, right? Or was was Valhalla? I it, like it was actually eighteen because it got okay. released before this was an American reprint. Okay, American and then reprint. I have Vindication. I'm kind of looking over at my Vindication was eighteen. Was eighteen. The expansion was nineteen. Yeah. Wrathborn Champions was actually twenty nineteen, and it. Uh, I backed it like two or three years ago, mm-hmm. and I ended up getting the copy, and it was actually really fun too. But like I said, it. I I have a feeling because the the twenty twenty list, like. It's it's gonna get so hard, yeah. like and it. I mean that's a good thing. Like here's the thing is like it's not just like these grandiose games. A lot of my games were were kind of bigger on Mars. Black those are mm-hmm. all bigger games, but the, t- the smaller ones they still are solid. Yeah, it, everyone has their own taste. Well, and like there was that one that I just heard about maybe two weeks ago, Runestones from Queen Games. Okay, <clears throat> apparently that's supposed to kick ass. That was really that, that was on here, uh, but um. Pro, the one game, and you know, I just told you I did, I didn't do Arkham LCG because of Cthulhu theme, mm-hmm. but I the podcast I listened to have talked up uh, Death May Die. Oh, Cthulhu really? Death May Die so much, talking about how it's probably their game of the year. Damn. That I'm like, God damn it! I should have <laughs> I should have backed that. Yeah, it because it apparently it's just like you play a solo is. Is wonder is awesome. Wow, and everything. So I'm sitting there like, Gosh. I wanted it for that 300 pound mini. Well, I don't care about that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but that thing looks cool. But I'm just like, I just want to get the try the game now, mm-hmm. you know. And and so it, it quite possibly could have been on here as well, yep. you know. Yep. Well, like, I have a whole huge list of stuff. A lot yeah, of yeah. I I I only wrote down yeah a lot of the ones that I had mentioned that that I ended up playing like games that are are in that were in the running that that because I only. Like I only write down games and I'm like this could make the list and mm-hmm. I then I put it on there. So Cloudspire. Cloudspire um was was uh in contention, uh mainly for its solo, but I mean it's one of those, you know, highly produced or definitely overproduced um MOBA MOBA games mm-hmm. that that are, are really good but um just didn't make the list. Paladins of the West Kingdom, like, was in consideration. I know you said you hadn't played it. I thought you had. When Sorcerer was your number two, I was like Oh, Paladins might be his number one, but uh, clearly, like you say, you had played that one's really good. Watergate was my uh, number eleven for a while, then eventually got pushed past that because um, that's a solid two-player mm-hmm. Twilight, uh, you know, t- kind of Twilight Struggle replacement. Not really, but it gives that same age. compared to it a lot. Yeah, um, was Res Arcana like in consideration for you no. at all? No. It was for me because I think Res Arcana is, is a phenomenal game, and they and they did announce an expansion. Um, I think it comes out early next year uh, for that's just going to add more cards because that's really all that needed. Empires of the North, once again, like I mentioned, 
Like, I, I did think about it, but I was like, I... It's, it's a better solo game. So I was like, I really... I mean, because I, I didn't want to be like, oh, this has to be, like, solo. So, like, it's just... It's just one of those years. Like, all these games that didn't make it are still phenomenal games. Right, right. And, unfortunately, this is not my job. It's not your job either. So, we're not playing 200 games a year. Like, I probably played 30, like, total. Like, 30, of, from from 2019. Like, I, I clearly played more than 30 games throughout the year. Yeah, but I'd probably say about 20, like, 25 for me. Maybe, yeah. Maybe a little bit more. Right, but I also go out of my way to buy 2019 games. Yeah. And a lot of it, I go when I go to Gen Con in August, I'm, like, buying. Then I'm like, okay, here it is from August up until December. Like, mm -hmm. I gotta get these games up. Um, like, Treasure Mountain I bought on a whim, still didn't play it. And, Empo like, Epic Spell Wars, like the Armageddon that yeah. haven't played it. Um, Carnival of Monsters, Richard Garfield's new game, is really good. Really good deck, not deck building, a car drafting game. That kind of, you can definitely tell he has some magic, because right. Richard Garfield. That was a lot of fun. And then a game that, like, I was very surprised at how well it was, was Pandemic Rapid Response. Like, it's, like... I think they hurt themselves by putting Pandemic on there, because I actually, it, I actually got a chance to play that game. Oh, did you? Yeah. What do you think? We'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> we have another list coming up. Yeah. That, that, uh, That's at funny. Some point. That's funny. But I thought I thought Pandemic Rock <coughs> was a blast. But what other games did you like? <clears throat> not well. I had Wingspan. Yeah. I had Tainted Grail on here because that was a big regret of not backing. Uh, yeah. Horrified was another Horrified one. was another one that everyone was talking about. Because I, I, I had it, I, they all have it within, with like the Chads mm -hmm. and everything. I never got a chance to play it. Cartographers. Yep, that's over there. I didn't get the chance to play um, it. I had Hadara, Edge of Darkness, Museum was another one. Yeah. Uh, Time of Legends, Joan of Arc. Man, I want, you know, like, I want that game so bad, like, but I want everything, I don't want to drop a grand, yeah. <laughs> like, on all that Chad stuff. Chad has all the first Kickstarter. Yeah, like, because I, 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 dragon that's, it's insane, it's, like, it's, like, it, it looks so cool, like, and I really want to try it, but I'm like, I, I can't, I can't, I mean, I guess I could always buy the base game and be happy with that, but I can't, I can't yeah. do that. So, yeah, but no, that was... About it. Yeah, so yeah. 2019 was was phenomenal. Um, very excited for for next year, but uh, yeah, the games just keep getting better and better. But that's our top ten games of 2019. Everyone, let us know what your favorite games are in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this, and if you like this video, then click the subscribe button below to enjoy any video that I put out. And right next to that subscribe button is a little bell, click that so you get notified of whenever I actually upload these videos. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely visit my Patreon page, the link is in the description below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.